الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد in the name of Allah the most merciful the one who bestows mercy indeed our praise is due to Allah the Lord of the worlds and may peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family his wives his companions and all those who follow the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until yawm al qiyamah respected brothers and sisters today we have a special lecture with our esteemed guest Sheikh Naim Rahman Hafizullah from from Mecca and also from Manchester and most of us we know of the Sheikh but just to give a quick introduction our Sheikh Hafizullah he graduated from Ummul Qura University in Mecca and he graduated from that university when I think most of us here were teenagers and also the other half perhaps not born and then after this he continued and he traveled to back to Pakistan and completed a master's degree and then after this he spent over a decade in the UK especially in Manchester and giving da'wah and many of the brothers who studied in Manchester in the university will be aware of the Sheikh's efforts in Manchester and then Allah subhanahu willed to take the Sheikh back to the university where he graduated from, i.e. Ummul Qura, but this time as a teacher instead of a student. And now, alhamdulillah, the Sheikh, he's a professor at Ummul Qura University in Mecca, and he specializes in al-Iqtisad al-Islami, Islamic finance or Islamic economics. And in addition to this, he has been honored with having a chair or a position in Masjid al-Haram al-Sharif, in which he gives fatawa and lessons, especially during the times in which the pilgrims come to Mecca. And he's here during his holidays from the university and still continuing with the efforts in da'wah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place these great efforts on his scales of goodness on Yawm al-Qiyamah. After this, regarding today's lecture, it's a very important lecture. And it's a lecture that many people, or a topic that many people are confused about. And it is regarding the Shia, the beliefs of the Shia, the deviations of the Shia, the Rafidah, and the, some of the innovations that occur. And it's more important this month and on this day because of the relevance of this day to their creed and their belief. So the Shaykh, inshallah, is going to shed light on this important topic. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq wal hidayah. And we leave it to the Shaykh. Faliyatafadl jazakumullahu khaira. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن عدة الشهور عند الله اثنى عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم ذلك الدين القيم فلا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم وقاتل المشركين كافة كما يقاتلونكم كافة واعلموا أن الله مع المتقين وقال الله سبحانه يا أهل الكتاب لا تغلوا في دينكم ولا تقولوا على الله إلا الحق وقال سبحانه يا أهل الكتاب لا تغلوا في دينكم غير الحق ولا تتبعوا أهواء قوم قد ضلوا من قبل وأضلوا كثيرا 
وظلوا عن سواء السبيل My respected brothers and my sisters in Islam we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the only lord of this universe we bear the witness that none is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we bear the witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his blessings and peace upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the talk as you heard is about the beliefs and the deviations or innovations of Shias. Mostly we find during the month of Muharram. Whenever there is Muharram, then we see that certain people, they celebrate Muharram. They call that this is Muharram, a special month, and then they celebrate the anniversary of uh, the death anniversary of Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an, grandson of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And beyond these 10 days, we don't see any of their activities as we see during these days. So the first thing we need to know about the month of Muharram that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all these months. And these are 12 months. In Iddat al-Shuhuri عند الله اثنى عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض. Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this universe, this earth, and all these heavens, since then, there are 12 months. And among these 12 months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Minha arba'atun hurum. Among these 10 months, there are four months which are very sacred. And they have a kind of speciality, a kind of fadl. And these four months, three of them, they are together. And one is Rajab. And these months which are together, these are Zil Qa'dah and Zil Hajjah and Muharram. So these three months are together. And Muharram is the first month of Islamic calendar. And the greatness and the fadl which is given to this month, it was long time ago when this incident of Karbala happened. So now, maybe a large majority of the people, they think that the sanctity of Muharram, the month of Muharram, and the sacredness of the month of Muharram, it is because of the incident of Karbala. What happened in Karbala and what happened to Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an and his uh, companions. So majority of the people, they think that the greatness of this month is related to this, but that is wrong. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he came to Medina, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw that the people of Medina among them, there were Jews, and they were fasting on the 10th of Muharram, and this is called Yom Ashura, the 10th day, the 10th of Muharram. They were fasting. Prophet ﷺ questioned them, 
that what was the reason behind this fasting. The Jewish people said, they replied, that this is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave freedom to Musa alayhi salatu was salam and his people, Bani Israel, from the injustice and cruelty of Fir'aun, Pharaoh. And being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam, he fasted on that day. And then the Jewish people of Medina, they were fasting on the 10th day of Muharram. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, نَحْنُ أَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ That we are more closer to Musa and we have the more right to follow Musa than you. Because Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasallam he was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the prophets, they are like brothers and all of them, they had one religion and that is the deen of Islam. Inna deen inda Allah al-Islam. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that we have more right to follow Musa alayhi salatu wa sallam than you. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and by that time the Obligation of fasting during the month of Ramadan, it has not been revealed. It was not revealed. So that's why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he ordered the people. So it was a kind of Amr. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Amara and Nas. He ordered the people to fast on the 10th day of Muharram. So the people were fasting. And when the uh, fasting of Ramadan made obligatory. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made this an option. Anybody who wants to fast, then uh, he can fast if somebody does not want them. So it is not an obligation. And then again, there is another thing which is uh, relevant, uh, being a Muslim and to make a difference with non-Muslims. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was told that oh Allah's messenger, the Jewish people, they uh, make this day a great day and they fast on this day. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wished that if I remain alive next year, I will fast not only on the 10th day, but on the 9th day and 10th day. So there is a difference between the uh, practice of Muslims uh, regarding fasting in Ashura and non-Muslims, Jews. So the point is that the month of Muharram is a sacred month since beginning. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this universe, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made this month the first month of uh, Islamic calendar. So this month has already been uh, declared as a special month. And that's why Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, the month uh, of uh, Muharram, if somebody fasts during this month. So this is Shahrullah. This is the month of Allah. And uh, also Prophet Sallallahu mentioned about the fasting on this day that uh, I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the sins of one previous year. Now we come to the next point which is related with the uh, beliefs of Shia. Unfortunately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as mentioned in Quran that كان الناس أمة واحدة that the people in the beginning, they were one ummah. This is about the humanity, and this is also about the Muslims. About the humanity, all the people, they were one ummah, and their deen was deen islam Inna deen inda Allah al-Islam. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ 
Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. These are Ulul Azam prophets. And all of them, and even those which have not been mentioned in Quran, all of them, they were preaching one deen, and that was the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is the deen of Islam. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَانَ النَّاسِ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ وَأَنزَلَ مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فِي مَخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ وَمَخْتَلَفَ فِيهِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْمُ الْبَيِّنَاتُ بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُمْ When the difference started among the people, it was because of jealousy and it was because of uh, hatred among themselves. And the same thing happened among Muslims. When Prophet ﷺ came, all the Muslims, they were one jama'ah. They were one group. There was not any sect other than the sect of the Sahaba and Firqa Najiya and uh, the group of uh, those companions of Prophet ﷺ who were following the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how they were following. But unfortunately, uh, until the time of Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, many enemies of Islam, like the Jews and others, they tried to fight against Muslims. The Meccan people, they did their best to fight against Islam, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to Muslims and Islam became the only religion in the Arabic Peninsula. And during the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, this Islam spread to many other parts of the world. And then those people, they realized that it is not possible for us to fight against Muslims, but if we can create some differences and we can divide the Muslims, and from here, and actually it was a political difference. It was not a religious or it was not a difference related with the uh, creed or faith because all the people and all the companions and the companion, followers of the companions, they were on what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he left them upon, as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, تَرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى مَهَجَّةٍ بَيْضَاء Laylaha kanahariha, that I left you on one way, on one path, and this path is very clear. So much so that its uh, night is so clear like the day. Laylaha kanahariha. And nobody leaves this uh, path unless he is going to make himself a dhal, yani somebody who wants to misguide himself and he wants to kill himself then he will leave this path. This is what Prophet ﷺ said. So, this difference which was created among the Muslims, and there was one person who pretended to be a Muslim, and his, he was actually a Jew, Abdullah bin Saba. And in those days, this... Uh, sect or this uh, belief, what he brought with him, it was called Sabaiya, because he was a, he, it, it was uh, associated, associated with him, Abdullah bin Sabah. And this fikr and this uh, uh, fikr dal, it was called Sabaiya. He was the person who pretended to be a Muslim, and he said that after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the house of Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, they were supposed to be the rulers. And he brought another concept which is called imamiya, imamiya. And now from here, the deviations started, 
and the innovations started. He said that Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he is a wasi of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is the imam. Imam means a leader, and he is the leader of Prophet, uh, he is the leader of Muslims after Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said that Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an, and Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, uh, they were actually, uh, they were zalim and they were cruels and they took this uh, right of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu from the Ahlul Bayt. And that's why uh, he uh, exaggerated in the position of Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. And first uh, he said that uh, it is uh, uh, a matter of uh, leadership, imama. And he said, Ali radiallahu ta'ala, and he is the imam, and his uh, imama has been mentioned in Quran. And not only this, that he said, Ali radiallahu ta'ala is imam, but he exaggerated so much in the position of Ali radiallahu ta'ala that on certain occasions he made Ali radiallahu ta'ala an as ilah. And it was during the time of Ali radiallahu ta'ala an that when he caught some of these people who had this kind of belief, then Ali, Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he punished them, he killed them, he put them in the fire because these were the innovations of in aqeedah, in Islamic creed, which was something new, which was not related with uh, any Islamic uh, aqeedah or any Islamic faith. These were something, uh, this was something new, totally uh, strange and totally against the Islamic uh, creed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alone. Allah is unique. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have any partners. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and before him, all the prophets, they were preaching this tawheed, monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how now somebody who is pretending to be a Muslim and he is saying that I am a Muslim and he is calling the people to his uh, da'wah and he is saying that Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he is uh, a kind of uh, ilah, na'uzu billahi min thalik. So that was the first innovation. And then also there was another innovation related with this and that was that Imam is also ma'asoom like Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yani a'imma ma'asoomin. They call them that these, these imams and to them they have uh, ithna ashar, a'imma, uh, 12 imams. They start from Ali radiallahu ta'ala an and the last one they say that he is hidden and uh, he will come uh, before uh, the day of judgment and he will establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all these concepts are very similar to the concepts of the Jews. The Jewish people, they say that the anti-Christ, he will come before the day of judgment and he will establish uh, their deen and he will rule all over the world. Uh, this is according to the Jewish uh, creed. The same thing this Abdullah bin Sabah, uh, he created among the Muslims and uh, those who uh, followed this creed and those who followed this path, uh, they also have the same uh, concept. Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he is bari. He does not have this uh, uh, aqeedah and even his uh, house, Ahlul Bayt, they don't have this aqeedah. One of the sons of Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he asked uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, Muhammad bin al ibn Hanafiyyah, he asked him that, Ayyun nasi afdal? 
بعد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم علي رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the best one from all the people after Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is Abu Bakr I want to tell you that how Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه he thinks about the Sahaba and how these people they say about Sahaba and what a kind of uh, abusive words they say about the companions of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه when he was questioned that who is the best one among the people after Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said Abu Bakr and then his son asked him who is after him he said Umar and then Muhammad bin Hanfiya he says that I was thinking that now he will say if I ask him who is best after him he will say Uthman then I said and then uh, then after Umar you O oh my father هل أنت بعد عمر and then Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه said no I am only uh, a Muslim among the Muslims. So he did not say that I am uh, better than anyone and I am better uh, after uh, Abu Bakr and Umar than there is my position. No, he didn't say. And the same, there is a hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr bin al-As radiallahu anhuma. He says that I asked Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam that who is the best one uh, after the prophets, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Abu Bakr, and then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Umar, and then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Uthman. So these Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een, they did not have any such difference of opinion, and uh, it was a kind of ijma'. There was a unanimous view of the Sahaba about the uh, about the superiority of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhum ajma'een. So they were the best people from all the companions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and there was not any such difference. But this Abdullah bin Sabah, when he came and he uh, tried to divide the Muslims, and during the time of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala because when the when there was time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he was very strong. And whenever there was any fitna, whenever there was any trouble, any uh, problem, or anybody tried to create any uh, difference, then Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he dealt it, dealt with this, you know, with iron hand. And that was the, uh, you know, the haybat and the, Shuja'a of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. And why it is not so? Because uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about Umar radiallahu ta'ala an that Yabna al Khattab, ma lakhiya shaytanu salikan fajjan illa salaka fajjan ghayra fajjik. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not say this about anybody else except Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. That when you are going on a path, then shaytan, he doesn't uh, come across you. And he leaves this way. The way you are following, shaitan does not uh, follow this way. Shaitan uh, goes away and leaves this uh, path. So that was Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. But during the time of Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, then people, they started uh, some grouping and there were kind of uh, uh, problem, you know, uh, these people, they... Uh, took the benefit of uh, his uh, uh, kindness and his mercifulness, Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, and uh, they divided the Muslims and they created all these problems. And this happened, what happened. Uh, we don't have the time to go into the details, but uh, this is the uh, time when these people, uh, they, uh, you know, they started their uh, uh, movement. So much so, Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, when he knew that there were people they wanted to attack on Medina and there were people they wanted to kill Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he appointed his two sons, Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an, 
to defend Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So I am telling you that how they were together and how they were respecting each other and how they were having uh, love for each other. So this is not the case that anybody had taken this, uh, uh, you know, this rule from Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, you know, by force and uh, somebody did anything wrong to them. No. Uh, we also find the evidence that once Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, uh, he left Medina and he uh, left uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, as a ruler, uh, as, uh, you know, somebody who was, uh, uh, who, who was uh, a vice of uh, Khalifa, and he was Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So there is not any such uh, incidents in the Islamic history uh, that these uh, Sahaba, these companions, uh, they were having such differences as we are told nowadays by these people uh, who call themselves that these are Shias. About their innovations, there are so many things. The whole faith, and the whole religion and the whole concept is based on lies. Because this is not the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was revealed in Quran and in Sunnah. This is something which was uh, taken uh, from the concepts of Abdullah ibn Saba, as I mentioned you in the beginning. For example, about Quran, all the Muslim ummah, they have ijma that this Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this Quran is free of any kind of uh, uh, any mistake or any uh, other, you know, nobody can do anything Nobody can add anything to Quran. Nobody can delete anything from Quran. This Quran is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and preserved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. Now we are talking about these innovations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this Quran, we have revealed the dhikr, and the dhikr means Quran. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr. And we are the protectors. We, we will preserve this Quran. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That this is the book. Anything which is not right, which is not haq, which is not true, truth, it does not come to this Quran. لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يدي ولا من خلفي. Not from the right, not from the uh, other way. And everything which is in this Quran, تنزيل من حكيم حميد. This is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the ijma of the ummah, that this Quran is protected by Allah, and there is a wisdom behind this. Because before this Quran, all the books which were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people, they changed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Jews and the Christians, يُحَرِّفُونَ الْكَلِمَ عَمَّ وَاضِعِهِ That they did the tahrif, they deviated, and they changed the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِيَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ they, they write the book with their own hands and then they say that this is from Allah just to get the money, just to get the worldly benefits. But because Quran is the last book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I am the last messenger, I am the messenger to all mankind. إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ كَافَةٍ لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have sent you to all the humanity, to all mankind. 
Same is Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هذا بيان للناس هدى وموعظة للمتقين That this is a message to all the people. And this message will remain until the day of judgment. So this is the wisdom of Allah that nobody can change this Quran. Now, this is what we find in Quran, that Allah has preserved it, Allah has protected it, and this Quran will remain as it was revealed by Allah until the day of judgment. Now somebody comes and says, no, this Quran was uh, muharraf, and this Quran is not uh, the protected. This Quran has been changed, and uh, there were some surahs in Quran uh, which we don't find in this Quran, which is uh, uh, which we have uh, nowadays, which is called Mus'haf Uthmani. So this is the innovation. So this is against Quran. If somebody thinks, and this is their uh, their leaders, their scholars, Bakr Majlisi and uh, Sheikh Al Mufid. Sheikh uh, Al Kalini and uh, big, big scholars, they wrote the books on this particular issue that this Quran is not the Quran which was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you can think about this that how somebody who does not believe in this Quran that this was revealed by Allah and there were some other ayahs and there were some other surahs which were there and now they are not there. So it meant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he said, inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun, then this is not true? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not preserve this Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not protect this Quran? So this is the biggest innovation in their faith and in their religion, which is related with the at-tahrif al-Quran. They say that this Quran is not the original Quran which was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, when you ask somebody that you people do not believe in Quran, they say, no, no, we believe in Quran. If you ask them that you do not uh, uh, say about Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what the other Muslims say, for example, that they were uh, the true uh, predecessors, successors. They were predecessors of Uthman and Ali, and they were successors of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they would say, no, we have the same concept. This is what they have a kind uh, of their faith, which they call taqiyya. They have different things in their heart and a different thing on their tongue. So what we take from them, it is not when they talk to us, but when their scholars, they have written books on this topic, then we realize that these people, they do not take Quran as a book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they say that this is a book which was uh, changed and uh, many surahs, for example, they say that there was one surah which is called Suratul Imama or Suratul Wilaya. They called it Suratul Wilaya, that there was a surah which was uh, about, uh, which was uh, revealed about the Wilaya of uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, and now we don't find this surah in Quran. And they say that this uh, uh, true copy of Quran the original copy of Quran is with that Imam which is hidden. And he will bring this Quran uh, when he will appear before the Day of Judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we have sent this Quran until the Day of Judgment as a message for all humanity. So it means that since this Imam is hidden until the Day of Judgment, people, they don't have any message from Allah. They don't have any message for guidance. So all these things are illogical. Even the logic will not accept this. 
And uh, they have many examples about uh, these, uh, uh, you know, about this uh, concept of tahrif. For example, they say, uh, Surah Al-Wilaya is not there, and they say Surah Al-Khula or Surah Al-Hafid, and then they say, for example, certain ayahs, بِئْسَ مَشْتَرَوْا بِهِ أَنفُسَهُمْ أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ بَغْيًا أَنْ يُنَزِّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ This is ayah in Quran, they say no. This, Quran, this ayah, there was word, أَنْ يُنَزِّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ في علي يعني it was revealed about علي رضي الله تعالى and there is another آية ولو أنهم فعلوا ما يعذون به لكان خيرا لهم سورة نساء they say no the actual آية was ولو أنهم فعلوا ما يعذون بعلي if they do what they have been advised to do about علي رضي الله تعالى these are some Examples. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابَ الرَّحِيمَ This is what we find in Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if these people, they come to you, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and if you seek forgiveness for them, then Allah will forgive them. They say no. This is not about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is about Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه. And the actual ayah was like this. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ يَا عَلِي When they came to you, O Ali, رضي الله تعالى So all these ayahs and all these surahs, they have actually fabricated. And they tried to put them in Quran, but actually, as you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved this Quran, and لَا يَاتِيهِ الْبَاطِلُ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَلَا مِنْ خَلْفِهِ Nobody can put anything wrong in this Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved it. So therefore, nobody says that this is a part of Quran. It is a part of their lies. It is a part of their fabrication. It is a part of their uh, lies about Allah. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Um, that somebody is saying something wrong about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفُوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهْرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْ تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ You know when somebody says that this was a part of Quran and it was not revealed in Quran, then he is what Allah says, وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ and he did not reveal, and it is not a part of Quran, it is not a part of the word of Allah, and it is your own lies, your own fabrications, and then you are trying to misguide the people. So this is uh, about the tahrif in Quran, which we have in their aqidah and in their creed and in their faith. Another thing which is uh, also very relevant to this, you know when they say that these uh, are the uh, Isna Asher Imam, uh, these are the 12 Imams. Uh, one of them, and they have this aqidah that every Imam uh, comes after uh, the previous Imam. The first Imam was Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, then Hassan, then Hussein, then uh, Imam Ali, Zainul Abideen, and then Imam Muhammad, and so on, up to the last one. And because this aqidah is not from Islam, and this is not from Quran or Sunnah. So first they said that uh, the next Imam, when it has been made clear that this is the next Imam, then this is from Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted to show the people that this is a wrong aqidah. Once they said that this Imam, he will be the successor of the previous one, but as decreed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this imam, he passed away in the life of his father. And from here, there was another sect which is called Zaydiyya. So some of them, 
they followed this imam, and some of them, they said, oh, no, something wrong happened. Because first they had this uh, concept that the new imam will come after the previous imam. And now this happened that one person, which they said that he will be the next imam, he passed away in the life of his father. Rather than saying that we made a mistake, yeah, and we said something wrong, and obviously they said something wrong, they said that, Nauzu Billah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he forgot. This is called al-bada. This is also one of the innovations in their deen, in their aqeedah. They said that something was not known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then this thing happened, and then Allah knew it. Is anyone, even the Jews and the Christians, they don't have such aqeedah. Everybody says that the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ultimate knowledge. This knowledge is unlimited. What do we say? We say that there is no one who knows unseen, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ only Allah knows. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ وَيُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْثِ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَى وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتِ These are the five things which Prophet ﷺ said that these are the keys of unseen. وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows only Him, nobody else. When the rain will come, what will happen tomorrow? What is in the womb of a mother? What somebody will do tomorrow? And when, in, when is the day of judgment? So these are the big things related with ilmul ghayb. And we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has this knowledge. And if somebody says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he forgot or there was something which was hidden from him. And later it was, became apparent before Allah. You are underestimating the knowledge of Allah, the wisdom of Allah, the power of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, when uh, Pharaoh, Fir'aun, he asked Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, okay, you are calling us towards Tawheed, the oneness of Allah. And what about the people who are in the past? فَمَا بَالُ الْقُرُونِ الْأُولَى فَمَا بَالُ الْقُرُونِ الْأُولَى قَالَ عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ رَبِّي فِي كِتَابِ لَا يَظِلُّ رَبِّي وَلَا يَنْسَى I'm saying to you that even the people in the past, they did not have this kind of concept. They did not have this kind of creed. Musa alayhi salatu was salam said, ilmuha inda rabbi fi kitab. That uh, their ilm, what is going, what will be, what will happen to them and uh, wh what is their position, what is their situation and how they will be dealt with. Their ilm is with Allah. Ilmuha inda rabbi. Ilmuha inda rabbi fi kitab. لا يضل ربي ولا ينسى الله سبحانه وتعالى he doesn't go astray and Allah سبحانه وتعالى he does not forget so this is the aqida of all the Muslims all over the world that Allah سبحانه وتعالى does not forget and these people they say that no Allah has forgotten and Allah سبحانه وتعالى he forgot about this uh, person and Allah made him imam in the beginning, and this person passed away in the life of his father, and, the, and then Allah made imam the next, the other son. So this is a total something we can say ignorance, and we can say that you did not recognize the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِ how somebody can 
dare to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he forgets. How somebody can say that there was something hidden from Allah and Allah did not know it before and then later it became apparent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what we call uh, al-bada in their uh, aqeedah. And they also have uh, another innovation and this is called al-ruj'iyah. Al-ruj'iyah, this is uh, another concept in their aqeedah. They say that uh, before the day of judgment, uh, like I mentioned you in the beginning, they say that this uh, uh, imam will come, the 12th imam, he will come and he will establish uh, the deen of Allah and he will establish the justice all over the world and this and that. Uh, they say that before the day of judgment, he will also uh, cause to the life, he will also bring to life, you know, some of the companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma, and our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, and some other companions, they say that this Imam will bring them to life before the day of judgment and he will establish justice upon them and he will punish them and he will do this to them and he will do that to them. Even we cannot, like we say, that نقل kufar kufar nabashad, and if somebody says any uh, saying of kufar, when we repeat it, then this is not kufar. But wallahi, when we talk about these things, we have fear of Allah, that how these people they can talk about these things, that somebody will come and he will uh, open the grave of Abu Bakr and Umar anhuma, and he will establish justice as they say, Naudhu Billah, and he will punish them. Or somebody will bring our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha uh, to life and somebody will punish her. So this is called a raj'iyah. This is a part of their aqeedah. This is a part of their faith. And also, uh, from the innovations they have in their aqeedah, uh, this is what they call uh, at tabarra You know, they say that we are bari, we are not uh, related, and we do not, we are not concerned with Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and other sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een. And not only this, they say that all of them, only three of the companions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they uh, remained steadfast on the deen, Miqdad bin Aswad and Salman Farsi and uh, uh, another companion. And then they said, rest of the companions, all of the companions, well, ayadu billah, uh, they became murtad, radda. So they left the deen. And this is again against Quran and Sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says that I have examined their hearts. I have examined their hearts for the deen, for the iman, and for the taqwa. These are the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that for them is forgiveness and for them is the great reward. And these people say that no, they became disbelievers after Prophet sallallahu wasallam. So Quran is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has examined their hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made their iman as a scale, as a standard for other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا That if you want to become believer, then you have to be a believer like them. You have to become yourself like them. Be a believer like Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhum ajma'een. Because their iman has been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them this certificate. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. So this is the Quran. And they say no. They say no to this Quran. They refuse Quran and that's why they called Rafidah. That's why they called Rafidah. This is one of their names. Because they refused Quran, they refused the Sunnah, they refused the Islamic creed, they refused Islamic Aqeedah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about the companions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah has pleased with them and they will be pleased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned their faith and their iman as a scale and as a standard for other people. And now if somebody says that no, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and all other Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een, they became murtad after Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, actually he is denying Quran. He's denying Quran. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he warned the people about his companions. And he said that if you people, you spend money or gold like a mountain, mountain of Uhud, then you will not get that much of ajr which anyone from my companions, he has spent only a sa. A sa means like a few, uh, two or three kilos. Only this much amount if somebody from my companions has spent for the sake of Allah, and you have spent a mountain of gold, then you will not get the ajr which they have got. So this is what Prophet Wasallam said about these companions. And now if somebody comes and says, no, all these companions, they gone astray, they were disbelievers, and they were kuffar, na'udhu billah, then actually you are denying Quran and you are denying the sunnah of Prophet Wasallam. And the same is with our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. You know, when people, they talk about the mother of Isa radiallahu ta'ala an, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the power and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the strength to this small child, a small kid, Isa alayhi salatu was salam, who was a baby, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a strength. And he said, Inni Abdullah. When they said about Maryam alayhi salam that you did something wrong, you committed a sin. Ya ukhta Harun, ma kana abuki mra asaw in wa ma kanat ummuki bagiya, fa asharat ilay, kalu kaifa nukalimu man kana fil mahdi sabiya, kala inni abdullah, atani al kitab, waja alani nabiya, waja alani mubarakan aina ma kuntu wa osani bis salati wa zakati ma dum tu haya, wa barram bi wali dati wa lam yaja alni jabbaran shakiya. Isa alayhi salat wa salam, he spoke. He was infant baby, and he spoke in the favor, in the defense of his mother. This is about Maryam alayhi salam. And you know who is Maryam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَاكِ وَطَهَرَكِ وَاصْطَفَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the mother of Isa, Maryam alayhi salam, upon all the women of the world. But when these people, the hypocrites, they spoke about our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. They spoke about our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and about the honor of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he spoke himself. Allahu Akbar. Look at the difference. People that said something about the mother of Isa, an infant baby, he spoke in the favor of his mother. 
And when people they spoke about our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke in the defense of our mother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed many ayahs in Quran. In the ladhina ja'u bil ifki usbatum minkum la tahsabuhu sharran lakum, bal huwa khayrun lakum. Those people who fabricated this false story about our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تحسبوه شرا لكم بل هو خير لكم لكل امرئ منهم ما اكتسب من الإثم والذي تولى كبره منهم له عذاب عظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ولولا إس سمعتموه ظن المؤمنون والمؤمنات بينفسهم خيرا وقالوا هذا إفكم مبين Why you did not say when, when you heard about this that this is a false story, this is a fabricated story, this is a false against our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. The Quran says this, that our mother is pure, our mother is clean, our mother is pious, pious righteous. Our mother is tayyibah, siddiqa, afifa. And these people they say, and this is also related with, with, with their tahrif in Quran. As I mentioned to you in the beginning, they said that this Quran is not the same Quran. They said about this ayah, in Allah ya'murukum an tadbahu baqara wal ayadu billah. They say that this ayah was revealed about our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. They said that this baqara means Aisha radiallahu anha. Na'udhu billahi bin dhalik. And Allah is saying that you Slaughter this cow. So I don't know that how if somebody is following Quran and if somebody is following the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, can how somebody can accept these kind of innovations? These are only some examples which I mentioned to you. And about this tabarra and about this uh, innovation, which they, when they say abusive words about Abu Bakr and Umar, ta'ala an, I don't know how they will face Prophet وسلم, on the day of judgment. You know, something happened between Abu Bakr and Umar, ta'ala an, anhuma. something happened. They were human beings. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said something which, uh, which Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he did not like. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he became angry. And he left Abu Bakr and he went to home. And Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he realized that I should not say that. And he was following Umar and saying, oh Umar, forgive me. Forgive me, I made you angry, forgive me, please. And Umar ignored Abu Bakr. And he went to his house. And he closed the door. When he closed the door, and Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he realized that Umar was angry, and I made him angry, and I said to him something, Abu Bakr came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am telling you that what is the position, what is the honor and respect of these companions? Abu Bakr who came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he told the story and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the meanwhile, Umar also came and he said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I made it a mistake when Abu Bakr came to me and I did not forgive him and I locked the door. I did not open the door for him. He was saying it. And Umar Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, O oh Allah's messenger, I said something wrong. I was the person who made the mistake. But Prophet ﷺ got angry. Why did he get angry? Because Umar 
he did not respect Abu Bakr the way he was supposed to respect him. And do you know what Prophet Sallallahu said at that time? Prophet Sallallahu said, هَلَّا تَرَكْتُمْ لِي صَاحِبِي Did you not leave for me my companion? Allahu Akbar. Prophet Sallallahu got angry that you people, you do not respect Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr is the one when all of you, you refuse to accept me, you refuse to believe in me, Antum kathabtum. Wa Abu Bakr, he was the only one. He saddaqani. He is the one who said Abu Bakr. He was the one who was saying that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever he said, he is true. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Halla taraktum li sahibi. Can you not spare me? And can you not spare this uh, companion of mine for myself? So what about if, if this is Umar, he is the most respectable one after Abu Bakr among all the companions. If he said something to Abu Bakr and Prophet Sallallahu got angry with him and Prophet Sallallahu is saying that can you not spare this Abu Bakr for me? Then what about those people who are saying abusive words about the companions, about Abu Bakr, and about Umar, and about Uthman, and about our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. You know when somebody asked the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, man ahabbu nas ilayk, who is the one which is the most beloved one to you? Then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Aisha, Aisha. And, and now if somebody is saying something about Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that she, she is this, what Allah has mentioned in this ayah, and somebody is saying that Aisha committed the sin, na'udhu billah, and somebody will bring her, bring her to life and open her grave and establish the justice and this and that. How somebody can say it? So my brothers, these are the things which are the innovations in their creed and in their aqidah. I just mentioned some of them and uh, I hope that uh, we have learned some lesson and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide the people. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive those who are not on the straight path and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show them the straight path because this is the right path. This is the deen which is the deen of Islam, the straight path. وَأَنَّ هَذَا سِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلُ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ if you are not following Quran, if you are not following the Sunnah, then no matter how beautiful shaitan has made your deen for you, you are, you have gone astray. You are not on the straight path. And we have to put everything, all the concepts, all the, all the views and all the practices and all the uh, things of any person or any group, if it is uh, against Quran and Sunnah, then we cannot take it. And if it is according to Quran and Sunnah, then this is what Prophet ﷺ said, ma ana alayhi wa ashabi, that if somebody, somebody is following that path on which I am today and my Sahaba, they are upon <coughs> this path today, then that person will be on the straight path أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين جزاكم الله خير وحسن الله إليكم Brothers, there's only, I think, two minutes left uh, until uh, the Adhan of Maghrib So, I think if anybody wants to make wudu, can make wudu uh, Otherwise, if you go to the Sufra, inshallah, the Adhan is about to be given um, If the, we don't have any time for question or answers now But if anybody has a specific question or a specific doubt 
Perhaps you can approach the Sheikh personally later on, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair.